Hi everyone, uh, I'm Hassan Akbari from Google Research and Columbia University. I'll be talking about uh, our paper titled "That uh, Transformers for Multimodal Self-Supervised Learning from Raw Video, Audio, and Text." This is a joint work uh, with Google, Google Research, and um, Columbia University. Uh, the research questions that we are trying to answer in this uh, work are: Can we use one architecture to learn video, audio, and language representations? And if so, can we uh, uh, take advantage of that uh, by sharing that architecture across uh, different modalities and basically having one backbone shared across those? And um, how could we use raw inputs uh, uh, with this architecture? And since we are using raw inputs, we are uh, expecting to have a lot of redundancy. How could we drop uh, that redundancy in, in raw inputs? And one of the this pipeline um, is that can be trained this pipeline without supervision. Um, so there are some related work in the literature, especially at the time of the publication, I mean, at the type of the uh, submission. Um, there were a few work uh, focused on um, vision, self supervised learning, vision plus text, vision plus audio, and very few work on uh, vision plus audio and text. And on the transformer side, um, um, there's been a recent uh, trend uh, on uh, utilizing transformers for other modalities and tasks than language understanding. And um, there were uh, th this whole um, trend started by VIT, which was uh, trying to uh, do the v image classification using a plane transformer. Uh, it was extended to video, and at the time of this uh, submission, there were no audio or multimodal transformers. Um, so the most important critiques on these methods is that, um, first of all, uh, almost all of these work um, have ad hoc network designs. And that limits us to um, have separate uh, weights uh, for, uh, for, for each modality. So we don't have any option for weight sharing across different modalities. And uh, most of these uh, architectures are computationally intensive, and this leads to uh, relying on low resolution inputs, which uh, leads to a limited performance. And other than that, mm, almost all of these work rely on heavy data pre-processing. For example, a spectrogram instead of raw inputs or pre-extracted features uh, for vision um, representations and so on. So we introduce that video, audio, and text transformers. Um, that relies on a modality agnostic architecture. And the uh, one of the most obvious choices is transformers. Um, this enables us to have the option of modality agnostic bit, so having only one backbone shared across different modalities for their forward calls. And um, this, um, this pipeline supports high resolution inputs and uh, add performance instead of the art in downstream tasks. And um, most importantly, it requires very minimal data pre-processing because of uh, operating on raw inputs. Um, so we have two settings in VAT. One of them is modality agnostic architecture, but modality specific weights. And the other one is modality agnostic architecture and modality agnostic weight. Um, so for the first setting, um, we have three inputs. Uh, video, audio, uh, audio waveform, and text. All of them are on uh, raw domain. And we have a modality specific patch plus projection or, or dense layer to uh, basically mapping uh, the raw inputs to a sequence of vectors, basically to mapping them to a vector space. And once we have the sequence of vectors, we feed them into um, three separate transformer encoders and extract um, video, audio, and text features and using a, uh, a standard contrastive estimation pipeline, we calculate the loss and back propagate the gradients and update the base. In the second setting, which is model diagnostic architecture and model diagnostic base, um, we have similar uh, raw to vector space projection, but uh, we share the transformer encoder across different modalities. So this means that we have three forward calls for each of the modalities. And once we have the features for each of those modalities, we have one loss, but we have one backward call. 
And so this enables us to only update, relying and updating, um, relying on and updating one set of dates for extracting semantic features for three modalities. Um, so on the patching layer, it's um, similar to the VIT line of work where um, we, we, we basically um, divide the facial space into uh, a grid of patches and um, we apply a linear projection on uh, the entire pixel to um, get the, a vector space. So the only difference is that here we have three dimensions. So instead of uh, a patch of pixels, we have a patch of voxels. Um, and for audio waveform is simpler because we have a non-overlapping sliding window and it is one, di one, uh, one dimension. And we have a uh, linear projection on each of those windows and we have a sequence of vectors this way. On the text side, it's very similar to the standard language understanding pipeline where we have a tokenization and we um, basically map each word into a one-hot encoding. And then uh, we have a projection after that one-hot one, one encoding, and we have a sequence of vectors again. Um, so the contrastive estimation is pretty similar to standard um, um, pipeline, where we have a hierarchical projection, and we map each modality to a common space. So it means that uh, if you want to um, uh, match video and audio features, we, we first uh, map them into a common space. We use noise contrastive estimation between them. Um, but if you want to match video and text, we basically have two layers of uh, projections. And this is inspired by uh, um, uh, multimodal versatile networks paper, uh, NURPS 2020. And uh, the intuition behind it is that we want to preserve the semantic hierarchy. So, so video and audio are assumed to have the same level of uh, semantic granularity. But if you want to match text with uh, either video or audio, we need to have extra projection on the uh, video or audio. And we use uh, multiple instance learning uh, noise contrastive estimation to match uh, text and video space. Uh, this means that for each video clip, uh, we have more than one um, positive text sample. Um, so uh, one of the issues with transformers is that they have quadratic computational complexity. And it is almost um, impossible to have a, trans a multimodal transformer with uh, standard uh, large scale um, computational research resource. So we introduce a drop token. Uh, the idea is very simple, but it is very effective. So we randomly drop a portion of the input. Um, so and it's only in the first layer after the um, uh, the raw to uh, semantic projection. So. We don't we don't drop anything within the transformer. It's only for the input to the transformer. Um, so these patches are basically uh, sampled randomly, and just a um, a portion of them are fed to the transformer. And this simple trick has very minimal performance decrease, but significantly reduces basically quadratically reduces the computational complexity. And this enables us to have a very high resolution for both pre-training and fine-training of uh, our multimodal transformer. Um, so we use two larger scale data sets, how to 100 million and audio set. Um, and um, we do use a wipeout policy, which is um, basically for uh, the videos which are removed or are private. And this makes us having even less than the original uh, video clips. So at the time of the submission, we had around 100 million video clips for how to 100 million and less than 2 million for audio set. Uh, we sample from these uh, data sets. We don't use any labels, and it's only uh, video or and audio pairs or video and text pairs. For audio set, we don't have any text, and we feed zeros as the input text. So for video, we use uh, 32 by 224 224, sample at 10, frame, 10 frames per second, uh, which uh, results in having a 3.2 seconds per clip. Um, so we apply random crop, resize, and flip, and color augmentation for uh, video frames. For audio, we have three point, the corresponding 3.2 seconds um, raw waveform sampled at uh, 48 um, kilohertz. 
um, we apply a random Gaussian noise to the uh, waveform uh, for the sake of augmentation. And on the tech side, we found it very um, better uh, using word tokenization instead of word piece tokenization. And um, we clip the um, input text to 16 tokens. Uh, we um, optimized this model using um, Adam Optimizer with a base learning rate warm up and uh, learning rate annealing to half of the uh, base learning rate. We use a batch size of 2048 with a total 500,000 steps. And a distributed training on 256 TPUs takes three days uh, using TPU version three. We um, evaluate our model on video action recognition, audio event classification, image classification, and zero shot video retrieval with a standard um, data set in the literature. So for video action recognition, uh, first of all, we set new records uh, at the time of this uh, submission on three of the most established video action recognition data sets. And um, we see that um, even using model diagnostic uh, weights gives us very uh, good results. Uh, so basically having a medium size of the model diagnostic um, uh, model gives us a similar result uh, to a base version of it. So this might confirm that even if you use more data and more capacity, we can easily um, um, basically uh, alter from a state of the art, even with uh, the model diagnostic base. Um, so I'll be used plain transformer, we use self-supervised pre-training in contrast to the recent efforts which have custom transformers and have supervised pre-training. Similarly, on audio event classification, we set new records, uh, but surprisingly here, the model diagnostic date, uh, which is the last row, uh, basically outperforms the state of the art on multi-label audio classification uh, on the waveform uh, level. Um, so we have an interesting observation here. Um, so with zero more network modification, we, we feed still images uh, to the, uh, the vision transformer part of the model. And we see that uh, even though there is a model, uh, there is a domain gap, we still see significant uh, improvement if we uh, use uh, video pre-training and other pre-training pipeline um, when we fine tune the whole model on image classification. We basically get comparable results to VRT based when it is pre-trained on super self-supervised um, uh, modeling um, on very large scale JFD data set. So for zero shot, we don't outperform a state of the art, but we get comparable results when we use um, similar batch sizes, but even a smaller uh, number of epochs. Um, so we performed uh, some interesting uh, analyses. So the first, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, the first one is uh, we fed video and text in the samples to the model, and we calculated uh, cosine similarity between the vectors of, uh, before feeding to the transformer and after feeding to the transformer. So we can see that in both modality specific and modality agnostic settings, uh, there is a clear distinction between um, the semantics. Uh, the, the similarities between the negative and positive pairs in video and text domain. We visualized the model uh, using testing, and we, we observed that there is a distinction between modalities and model diagnostic setting, but um, the, 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 the embeddings are basically mixed together uh, in the model diagnostic setting. So uh, this might uh, basically suggest that the, mod uh, the model diagnostic setting further pushes the semantic uh, um, understanding to the earlier levels. So, um, so basically in the modality specific setting, the model sees every single modality separate, but in the model diagnostic, it sees them different symbols or characters of uh, different languages. And this is interesting and um, it requires further analysis. Another uh, interesting observation is that uh, by visualizing the yellow activations uh, in the nodes of the model diagnostic model, we see that there are slightly different uh, patterns for activations, even though using the same backbone. So the text has earlier activations, uh, but video and audio have later activations, but from certain points, uh, in the certain layers to the end, uh, the model treats all, um, basically all modalities the same. 
it seems that from certain players, it has the same level of understanding, semantic understanding of the modality. And finally, we can see that there is a clear class separability when we fine tune the vision transformer on kinetics um, versus uh, training it from scratch. Um, so to conclude everything, uh, we introduced the first end-to-end -end multimodal transformer, uh, which operates on raw inputs. Uh, it's, it relies on self-supervised multimodal pre-training, and it has a model diagnostic backbone. We introduced drop token that uh, is an effective regularization method for low-cost training. Um, please refer to the paper for analysis and uh, ablation study on the drop token. And we set state of the art performance in downstream tasks. And finally, this work is the one of the first prototypes for end-to-end -end multimodal foundation models at scale. Um, thank you for your attention. Please feel free to reach out to us uh, for further questions or collaboration.